Welcome to The Five. Today is July 12th, 2021. Today's five topics you need to know about. Schools and masks guidance in 2021. Conor McGregor has been hurt. We've got Peacock in the Olympics, my Boost subscriber stuff, Apple, Fortnite, and Epic Games, and will large companies finally be forced to actually pay taxes? Joining me today, Ben on my right, Josh on my left, I am Tyler, so we'll get started right away. Uh, the CDC has issued guidelines for schools and masks in 2021. It's not that long until fall and school starts. Mm -hmm. So here's the quip from uh, the AP, Associated Press. Vaccine teachers and students don't have to wear masks inside school buildings, according to that. Uh, of course, that's 12 and up, which is some kids, but an awful lot not yet. But that would include teachers, vaccinated teachers. Uh, Josh, what do you think about your kids going to school with masks on? Kids. You want to have kids? <laughs> no? On the record. All right. Doesn't, no kids doesn't want to have kids. Uh, ben, mm -hmm. thoughts on masks and schools and guidance? I mean, if it's if they don't think it's going to hurt anybody, I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, uh, of course, like the kids that aren't vaccinated, like, like my son, he's 10, he's going to have to wear a mask. And I think he should wear a mask. And anyone who's not vaccinated, like the teachers or whatever, they should be wearing masks or whatever. But I'm just kind of curious how the the, you know the new you know the delta variant the delta variant that, yeah that's going to change things in a matter of weeks because i feel like that is starting to you know get worse yeah that has been spreading yeah the delta variant and they say a lot of places have been seeing an increase in deaths and mm -hmm. hospitalizations things like that but the key thing they keep driving in is that the current vaccine which is free and readily available yeah. to most people right. is safe and effective at stopping serious issues with that yeah i know they were talking there was some conf some confusement about visor offering a booster for the people that got the visor like me myself or whatever but they it seems to be clear though that the delta is really not affecting the people that are fully vaccinated yeah it's only the people that are completely not vaccinated especially in the states where uh majority of the population are not vaccinated yet those are the uh, states that are having the, the issues so far so i guess i mean i guess i mean that's kind of good but i guess just point it just just get vaccinated <laughs> well i think that the gist of yeah. it was so pfizer said that they were working in a booster shot for this fall like yeah. to help specifically target this delta variant and then people were like well is this gonna be a problem and then right away it was like Fauci and cdc stuff like the current vaccines are very effective at preventing issues right. with the delta variant so you yeah. get vaccinated see this kind of reminds me of last year now i know it's completely completely different from last year because now we have a vaccine where a year ago we didn't but i remember last summer it was it seemed like things were returning to normal you know it, mm -hmm. it was hot outside and stuff like that but then when school came back in and then the, uh, the weather got colder people were inside more then cases started to go up again so I'm, you know, now we got the Delta variant, which they say is even highly more uh, contagious mm -hmm. now. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty rapid now. Uh, so I wonder if we're going to see the kind of the same pattern as we did a year ago. And, and it's, it's frustrating because, well, first of all, do you, we'll go down the line. Do you know any anti-maskers or any anti-vaxxers? Yes. Mainly because from where I come from, this small town. It's a small town. I don't really associate with people like that, but I are, do know that they're there. Yeah. And are they proud of their anti-masking, yeah. anti-vaccine? Yes. Like, like vaccines too, like this vaccine and or other vaccines. Not just like I'm not going to wear masks because I'm a badass, but like I'm not going to get a measles vaccine for my kids. No, I've only seen it with the, the COVID vaccines. I've never... I mean, I, have, I, I do know a few, like, anti-vaxxers, like, across the board, they don't like any of them, but mm -hmm. I didn't know so many people were yeah. like that, like, yeah. so... I, I find it more, it's the people that they, they think that they're not around people enough for it to affect them, the people that live mm -hmm. out in, you know, these rural uh, counties and stuff like that, they, they're not around people, they think they're not around people enough for it to affect them. But in reality is, you know, they go to grocery stores too, mm -hmm. they go to banks, they go to doctor's offices and stuff, just like everybody else. So if you're doing that stuff, you are still putting yourself at risk of well, catching something. Isn't it a lot of the, like the small town 
I don't know, mentality is like, we're not gonna be told what to do. Like we can make our own decisions. We're not gonna have the government say to wear a mask, even mm -hmm. though it protects ourselves and others. Isn't that, I mean. Yeah, that's a lot of, like they take pride in like, I'm not, I'm not, you're not gonna tell me what to do. Like I don't, this is all, they think it's all fake. They're like, <laughs> I, I just, it blows my mind. I yeah. don't know. At, at, one, at, one, at what point does it start to become uh, pretty obvious to them that this is not fake, that this is actually real? You know, the, <laughs> the, the strange thing about that is like, I have, I have some relatives that live in, a, live, in, live in the country, small town, USA kind of thing. And they're, they're not really anti-vaxxers, but like the anti-mask kind of like the, like you just said, Josh, kind of the, we're not gonna like let the government tell us what we can or cannot do. And the strange thing about that is like one of them had, was hospitalized twice like with COVID issues. Yeah. And that doesn't seem to make that much of a connection. And it's, it's, it's very strange to me. Like you said, like at what point does it seem real? Yeah. I guess there is no, I guess there is no point. Yeah, Cause there's like people, people are dying. There's people Many that have will, died. will die of COVID and they'll go to the grave as you hear in the news of people that they still never believed in it. Yeah. Even though they died, they ended people, up dying from it. I've seen like these, like the articles and like quotes from these doctors saying like they'll be trying to save a patient's life as they're like their internal organs are failing and they're mm -hmm. dying, and the person like with their last dying breath will say it's not real. Yeah. I'm like what kind of interesting disconnect is that? Like as it's literally mm -hmm. taking your life, that yeah. with that last breath you want to say that thing does not exist. <laughs> what a, what, yeah. a, what a strange yeah, what a strange it, combination. Even if you don't die from it, the symptoms you get from it are. It's, Awful. I mean, anyone who's had a really strong, severe cold knows that that's no fun. Yeah. So I can't. And I mean, I mean, Josh, you might be able to speak on. I mean, it was not a cold. It, <laughs> it was not fun. And I'm 24. Like I can't imagine being you know, right. Mm -hmm. A lot older. Yeah. A lot of other so, complications. So even if it doesn't kill you, it's still not fun to have. I mean, just get the vaccine, so you don't have to deal with any of that. Yes, get the vaccine. And I think the frustrating part about the vaccine stuff is, I really wouldn't mind if people wanted to not get the vaccine and it didn't directly impact me. And I say that kind of like, kind of like, like, like a smoker, for example, like, is it the right to smoke? I believe in that just fine, but you being around them don't have a, a choice to not breathe. So like their decisions directly impact you. Yeah. And if you have people that are unwilling to get the vaccine, I don't really have a necessarily huge problem with that, yeah. but they will be around other people such as my children eventually through yeah. all how these things spread that cannot get the vaccine yet so you do impact other people yeah. by that choice i don't have any problem with choices that impact mm -hmm. you i do have a bit of a problem with choices that impact other people that choose not to be impacted by your choices yeah that's the point yeah. and it's it's frustrating because you impact lots of people that's how these viruses spread mm -hmm. anyway that digress into a just get the vaccine yeah, okay uh, what else we got? So Conor McGregor. I don't follow. What is it? MMA. What does he do? Yeah. Man, Who wants to summarize what happened with Conor McGregor? I guess I will. You know, it's a trilogy fight. You know, they're each one and one. Both knocked each other out. This Who was, was the other fighter? Dustin Poirier. Okay. Um. It just you know started off really quick. You know, I I think I know two judges because it's it, they based it off of a ten point scoring system. Mm -hmm. Two judges had that round going 10-8 to Dustin, which a 10-8 is a very convincing. Yeah. Like you did a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. um, it's sad because, I mean, I like both fighters, but I mean, Connor, yeah. he's entertaining. Dustin's entertaining. So but he was in a fight. What happened to Connor McGregor? He, he, I think he broke his tibia, tibia, fibula at the same time. Was it, is it ink? Okay. Yeah. So some leg injuries, yeah, yeah. right? So. The, the decision was ruled a TKO, right? A technical T knockout? To Dr. Stoppage. Yeah. The Dr. Stoppage, was that because he took a, was that because of a blow he took to the head or was it because of his, his, his it's, ankle? In the ankle. It was like the last like 30 seconds. They were like exchanging close to the, close to the fence. Mm -hmm. And like, they think it stemmed from a previous ankle injury that he sustained like in, uh, in his training camp, Poirier was saying that he checked the leg kick, but I, we looked back, we didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. But he went, he like pivoted on his ankle to throw a punch and it just gave out. You mm -hmm. see, his, he, I mean, I've seen the video, I mean, I watched yeah. it live, but you, his ankle just folds inwards 
Yeah. So it's, it's the Poirier, is that what yeah, you say? So Poirier, here's a, here's a snippet. Hit, hit Conor McGregor with a combination at the end of the first round of Saturday night's UFC 264 main event. McGregor went to play in his left foot and his leg buckled, sending him to the mat, and Poirier followed up with punches on the ground as time expired in the round. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, lower tibia, Dana White later said, UFC president, McGregor's lower tibia and have surgery Sunday morning. I guess it's already happened, mm -hmm. right? And he's a character. That part, I'll give him that. Well, yeah, that's unfortunate because that was a highly anticipated fight, and Conor McGregor is is known to be, and he will go down as a legend of UFC for sure, no matter what. And uh, I know that was a best of three too, and uh, you don't really even know. Like it, it seemed like Poirier was had a convincing win because like it was like ten to eight or something like that. You just feel like it. The, the finish was still not satisfying. Like you, there was still no closure between that robbery, and I think that's what uh, a lot of fans want to see. And I think McGregor is basically saying that this is not over; that he wants to fight him again. I've heard with like UFC and boxing also that it's much more what you can take than what you can give. Yeah. Would you guys agree? Like. Because eventually somebody gets worn out, so like you can just take it eventually, right? Yeah, yeah. Big, I watched this. It was a really fascinating thing on the Discovery Channel or something like several years ago, talking about like MMA fighters and things like that, and the things that happens to these fighters, like punches in the in the gut to people like us, which just break your ribs, yeah. and somehow their ribs don't break, mm -hmm. and that like their their bodies get trained and like the bones get harder pretty mm -hmm. much so things that would break bones on someone like me yeah don't break bones on a oh yeah on a UFC that's fighter, why they have young which is really crazy that's why they have young fighters they'll kick tires uh, they'll kick bamboo or they'll kick something and then they'll just strengthening the bone of their shin or their knuckles or something like the bones don't break anymore yeah it's called like body and like shin conditioning and stuff like that like, yeah. a lot of them do like training and stuff where like, I know the guy I fought over the weekend, Wonderboy, he does, like, three times a week, he'll do, like, 25 minutes of body conditioning and stuff, where he just takes shots up and down his body. Mm -hmm. Like, he takes stuff to his shins, where he, like, grinds down, like, the nerves and stuff, so mm -hmm. he doesn't feel it. And... Yeah. What a what a strange thing to wake up that day and think, I'm just going to get punched for 25 minutes today. Yeah. <laughs> that's why... That's, <laughs> that's what's going to happen you, today. You don't want to get... You, just don't, you don't get punched or kicked by anybody, but especially these guys. I mean, these guys have knockout power lethal knockout power yeah. they get you clean to the head or i mean especially if you got two fighters uh banging shins against each other it, of course one of them is gonna something bad's gonna happen because they're, they're just so strong and so forceful that uh yeah i'm not really surprised that he that he uh if he did throw a kick and the guy checked him he said that didn't happen yeah i saw like people breaking it down that didn't happen i think it's a previous ankle injury hmm. or some yeah, kind of previous injury, injury yeah. aggravated yeah, yeah. I saw that. All right, uh, next thing, Peacock and the Olympics. Does anybody have a Peacock subscription? I do, actually. We got one. Parents pay for it. We, well, parents pay for it, but we got two for three. I don't have one. Uh, but in one of NBC's, their streaming service, which is taking over The Office, off of Netflix, big problem there, but that's a side note. Uh, so they're saying the Olympics, which NBC has rights to do that. It has like four companies, right, that own everything. Yeah. So NBC, which has Peacock, so they're gonna put the Olympics on there. They're estimating an increase of 30% on subscribers because of the Olympics. Mm. Uh, you guys watch the Olympics? Um, I do occasionally, yes, you know. I like the Olympics. I think what I've, I really enjoy more like the, the finals of things. There's so many preliminary and then yeah. quarterfinals, semifinals, and those are okay to watch. Like the actual events where somebody wins. Mm. I think it is interesting. I think about this as, as a competitive person there are so few times in your life you can say you're the best in the world at something. Right. And I feel like the Olympics is one of those times where, like, if you, and that's why I take issue with a lot of things with judging, because I feel there's still some subjectivity right. when there's judges <laughs> judging how you did. But if you're, say, running some particular race, you can say, like, I was the fastest person in that race, and these are the fastest in the world. Like, I literally am yeah. the best in the world at this. Most people never get to say that in their life. Right. Or even, I mean, I know. If you're not first, you're last, but Ricky Bobby. just being, yeah, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> but just, I mean, being considered to be uh, up to par with these people, yeah. just to be able to be in competition mm -hmm. with them, I think is, is awesome too. A lot of times, what is it, like the opening ceremony, they have all these athletes from all over the world right coming in. Right. And I also think it's strange too, knowing that when you, you have these huge fields of people and you know there's a few 
that are like realistic people that might win first, second, third, and you have most everyone that knows that they have no chance of winning. I find that and like you represent your country and I can really respect that and to be there with the company yeah. of these amazing athletes. But I also think it's weird a little bit to go there with all this pride realizing you're, you have no chance of winning. What a, what a strange combination too, right? Yeah. It's, it's, just, a, it's just interesting. So many parts of the, world competition. There's definitely something to be said just about just be happy, just being happy to be there. Yeah. You know, there's something to be said about that. That I would think, be. I've also heard too, this is, this may be like more of a PG-13, but they say I like the, yeah, Josh was like, what is this? Are, are you old enough for this one? I already know where you're going with it, yeah. About like the the sex fest that the, yeah. the athletes have. Yeah, you got, it, with COVID, I don't know how much it'll be. They're trying to do all this stuff in Tokyo, mm -hmm. but like the, the condom distribution, you get all these people like in top physical prime shape of their lives, <laughs> half of them riding high on adrenaline, half of them feeling sorry for themselves for doing badly. <laughs> and you get this combination of just people doing it for like two weeks straight. Yeah. Josh, yeah, you even knew what I was going to say when yeah. I brought that up. <laughs> you have any, have any, uh, anything to add to that? What did they say? Like the, the last, like the, the Sochi Olympics, I ended up like 400,000 condoms. That's a lot of sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, it does sound exhausting. It's not all for anyways. one person. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, right now, actually, Peacock is not is actually not bad. It's not a bad deal. I think. I mean, I know they have uh, different tiers. Like starting out, it's like, is it? It's like there's like a five dollar one, and there's like I I pay for it. I think I get the ten dollar one. I mean, it's cheap there's, now. There's but, free. There's a free ones with ads. Yeah. There's a free one with ads and stuff like that. But um, but they. they tend to be trying to add more sports packages or getting, if you're a yeah. fan of live sports, which is really hard to do unless you have a cable subscription, which we don't want anymore. No one wants a cable mm -hmm. subscription anymore. It's really hard being a fan of live sports. And I feel like Peacock actually is actually trying to do better at getting more live sports on their platform. So if you don't have Peacock now, I would suggest you get it if you are a fan of live sports. You think that Peacock is trying harder than other competitors to get live sports? Oh, I think at right now, so far, I mean, uh, I think, uh, well, going on the show, I know they just st struck a mega deal with WWE. Uh, uh, and then I know they're getting Sunday Night Football. They got the Olympics. Uh, I think they have, don't they have soccer on there? They have like a lot of soccer. On there. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's why we had. You know? Yeah, so I think if you're a big sports fan, I think if you don't have Peacock, I would suggest you get it because uh, the more packages they, more sports stuff they add, you know, those prices are going to go up. Next on the list, mm -hmm. Epic Games versus Apple. So I guess Epic Games makes Fortnite, right? You know, when you guys play Fortnite, I don't. I, I have a little. No bit. people that do probably. I, I did. I, you did? I played yeah. very poorly at it, yes. And your son probably plays it on a regular basis? No. Oh, actually, yeah, he does. He does. He, does. he plays it like, be really all the time. Right? Yeah, he still is, yeah. Okay. So I guess Epic Games makes Fortnite, and at issue with this particular lawsuit, right, is that Apple, with their with the App Store, expects to take like a 30% cut of pretty much everything that comes in there for revenue. And then Epic Games did a thing where you could get DLC for the... People as what? Downloadable content. Downloadable content. Mm -hmm. uh, at pretty much game added you pay for, right? That they found a way to get direct payment instead of going through Apple. So they were, Apple lost their cut essentially. Mm -hmm. So Apple immediately kicked off Fortnite from their platform and then Fortnite immediately, or I guess Epic Games, immediately sued Apple that they did have the right to do this. Apple says they didn't and like counter competitive practices and monopolies mm -hmm. and all that. So that's the gist. Apple thinks we can make you give us a cut of everything and Epic says, no, you could pay us directly for stuff you want to put in the game. Mm -hmm. And there was a, an, in Australia, one of many places I'm sure they're dealing with this stuff. Let's see, in November, Epic brought the issue to Australia, blah, 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 blah. Let's see, they win the appeal. So I guess in Australia, uh, now Epic Games has the right to connect, to collect payment directly and not go through Apple. Mm -hmm. That is one of many countries that will, I'm sure, play out in. But, uh, you know what, games? I know it was never big into games as a kid, but it seems like every game used to be, oh, this is an old person thing to say, you see, well, they buy a game mm -hmm. and then just play that game all the time with no surprises of trickling money left and right, left and right. Yeah. Now it's like you, you pay for games sometimes, but half the time the game is free, fixed price, freemium, get the game for free, mm -hmm. and then it's just non-stop downloadable content, add this, add mm -hmm. this, add this. Yep. That's like a real trend, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. so it's the way they make 
it's like the best way to make money for them now. Like free to play games is the it's the easiest way to get people in the door. In the door. People in the door, yeah. like you know, Fortnite, Warzone, Apex Legends. Mm -hmm. And then people love customizing their character, making them look unique, so they just sell skins, yeah, stuff like that. And then that, I mean, you do that say once a month, that you know, mm -hmm. ten twenty dollars a skin, mm -hmm. they're gonna make more than like the sixty dollars for the game. Yeah. And then you throw in like the battle passes, which is <laughs> that's just to get you know that's something for people to work for. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just keep them coming back and playing. You know, my my son is big into video games, like. uh He's always wanting downloadable content of stuff, especially like Smash Brothers, which is still a big thing. Nintendo Switch, and you can get like characters and costume packs and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's almost going more retro. Like he's been asking to get like a Wii U. He has to get Nintendo 64. He has to get the regular Nintendo. Yeah. Like all these things, and that's kind of interesting because we used to have a Nintendo 64, and then probably sold it for like 20 bucks at a yard sale or something forever mm -hmm. ago. But and now they have like these two like emulators right where you can buy them online like 900 games to fit on like one little usb drive <laughs> you can play these all these classic games it's pretty cool might be a you're not watching right now but maybe like a christmas gift i'm like an easier way than buying like than, than, than dripping out character things every time here's, here's 100 games for 40 dollars see you in a couple months all right so that's been uh, going on and last but not least and i wanted to put this one in here because it's, it's just interesting to me but have you guys ever heard how large companies never seem to pay their fair share of taxes yeah. all the time like these companies yeah. make like a billion dollars a month under a billion dollars all these obscene amounts of profit like what yeah. but they pay like 12 dollars in income taxes yeah so every presidential election that's usually a hot yeah. topic or debate do you guys know one of the so, so you always hear about like offshore like money's held offshore and all this mm -hmm. stuff do you know the gist of how that works how they manage to legally pay so little tax you know, thinks that they, well, you can explain, I'm just going to it's, explain. Okay. It's extremely, so where you, right now, under current law, is where you book your profit, like a multinational company, if you have offices and development all over the world, you naturally want to pay as little tax as you can, and based on where you actually book the profit, where the profit actually exists, impacts a whole lot of how much you pay because various countries have lots of different tax rates like Cayman Islands and over that one have like a zero percent tax rate uh, so if you could shift profits to somewhere like the Cayman Islands instead of if you make money on paper there versus in the United States you can keep all the money and pay a whole lot less in taxes is the idea of it and there are several methods used for this all the time one of them is called transfer pricing mm -hmm. say uh Say you set up a company on paper that imports something to the Cayman Islands and then sells it to the United States. They might not actually do anything. You might actually just buy it straight from somewhere else and ship it straight to the U.S. because things get drop shipped like that all the time. Yeah. But then, oh, but it gets marked up double from the Cayman Islands, so you have a bunch of the profit come into the Cayman Islands instead of the United States. Mm. And transfer pricing is really coming under more scrutiny. That's been getting a lot better. But the big problem you find it is when it comes to intellectual property. Uh, trademarks, patents, and you hear about this the most when it comes to a lot of big tech companies. That so, say say for example, you own a very very valuable trademark or a very valuable patent, like the Google search, a very valuable patent. You might keep that in a different country, right? So you send your patent ownership to a foreign country, then the United States company pays a royalty or a thing like that, like you pay a million dollars a month to the foreign company which actually holds the patent like as a licensing arrangement so then you can legally filter so much money to the foreign country based off licensing and things like intellectual property hmm. does that make any sense kind of going over my head kind of going over yeah. your head so so say uh say you were a google josh mm -hmm. say you were a google and you operate all over the world uh you set up a company in ireland and then some lawyers say, by the way, now this company in Ireland, which we control, but this company in Ireland owns the patent to the Google search. Very, very valuable. And then, but the US company says, oh, we, we have to use this, this Google search, so we're gonna pay the company in Ireland a billion dollars a month for the privilege of using the Google search. Mm -hmm. okay. But both these companies are owned by Alphabet, which, is, which owns Google. So pretty much you, you, you pay a licensing fee to yourself, use things you already own which is 
messed up, but very much legal. Yeah. So they're trying to, so intellectual property is a big thing. A lot of times, and a lot of companies use it as best they can too, because uh, even things they own like logos, and intellectual property, you can, like anything you can patent or trademark, people tend to put ownership in low tax jurisdictions mm -hmm. and then use that same system as described to, to do that. You like, like Subway, if you ever notice, a lot of things are owned by like an IP LLC because you sub, you separate off any little intellectual property you can so you can more efficiently deal with taxes. That's the most common thing. So anyway, by doing that, by these huge multinational corporations, you end up with all these billions and trillions of dollars held in overseas accounts, which naturally every country wants to get their cut of, United States as well as those. So a lot of these countries in the world are trying to get, come up with a global minimum tax rate, meaning that no matter where you book the profits, you pay the same tax or a minimum of the same tax, de-incentivizing the money to another country. So well, if you pay the same, might as well keep it here. Yeah. That's the main idea with that. Okay. Uh, but they're trying to work on that. It's 130 countries that are trying to work together that back the conceptual framework, global minimum tax of at least 15%. That would force giants like Amazon and Facebook and global businesses to pay countries where their goods are sold, even if they have no physical presence there. A lot of that same stuff, uh, moving stuff around. Uh, let's see, changes would increase at least 150 billion in global tax revenue per year and shift 100 billion in profits to different countries. Uh, so that wasn't, there's not a whole lot there. And they're saying it's gonna be hard to pass because there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of countries that make a lot of money on paper, like because if you have mm -hmm. like 100 billion in assets held in some rinky dink bank in the Cayman Islands, they use that money to loan out to other people and things like that. Yeah, it's a lot of countries based most of their economic strength on companies just holding money there. So there would be a thing to that, but it's will it pass? Who knows? People can never be in much in Washington. A lot of those people have lots of money yeah. and have interests and lobbyists and all that. So nothing ever yeah. seems to actually happen with all that stuff. But that is just how I can look smart around people by describing how that stuff works. Uh, you guys learned something today though, huh? Yeah. But how a lot of that profit shifting works. Yeah. It'd be interesting is see what kind of loophole they come up with to get out of that if that passes. They got a lot of incentive to, to not change things. Right. So anyway, go to where today's the five again. Masks and schools, which just became a thing of mostly about Max and vaccines. Conor McGregor got hurt. Hopefully, wish him well. He's an entertaining character. I don't care much about MMA and UFC, but it's interesting. Uh, Peacock in the Olympics and streaming. Epic and Apple and legal stuff there. And companies and large, large companies actually having to pay more taxes. Who knows? We'll find out. So that has been today's The Five, July 12th, 2021. Tyler, Ben, Josh, thank you for watching, for listening. Please continue to watch and listen anywhere you find your podcasts or your videos. Thank you.